Welcome to Ask GC Anything, this week with added backdrop. Look at that, that is the Dormice, if you didn't know. We're in Alta Badia, but nevertheless, Ask GC Anything continues. Do you want to take this up with the first one, Tom? Sure, this week we are going for a special bike maintenance Ask GC Anything. And the first question is from Doerus, who asks, this is quite a grim one, can old slash dirty bar tape make you sick? I'm talking about like three to five years old, full of sweat and not clean very often. Man, that is gross. Uh, well, I definitely wouldn't lick it, I suppose. Uh, but maybe it'll make you sick. I That's actually quite a good question, isn't it? I've got no idea what the real answer is. Uh, but maybe it's time for a change. If you think your bikes can make you sick, it's probably worth doing something about it, isn't it? Yeah, if your bar tape has turned into a science experiment, it might not be bad for you, but it will look horrific. Yeah. Yeah, although if you run black bar tape, no one would ever know. There you go, top tip for you. Uh, right, moving on, we've got this from Eleftherios Liratsis. Uh, he says he inflates his road tyres to the maximum amount of pressure, but yet when he goes riding, they still look kind of flat, so what should he do? Um, they, this puzzled me, this one, Tom, because you should never really have to inflate your tyres to the maximum amount of pressure. Um, but if they're still looking kind of flat, the only thing I thought was that maybe you could run wider tyres, um, if your bike will fit them, or you uh, get someone else to check what it looks like when you're sat on the bike. So maybe it looks like it's flat, but actually it's not. Tell us that, of course, there's a kind of tyre pressure related question, or at least it starts with tyre pressure. He asks, what is on your pre-ride checklist as far as your bike's kind of roadworthiness goes? I'd check the tyre pressure, for sure. Uh, and then generally anything else becomes apparent as I <laughs> cycle down the road. So uh, maybe chain loop and then I'll turn around and go home and put some more on. But, uh, but yeah, not very much, actually, I don't think. I think that's the point. If you've got a well-maintained bike or if you are kind of good at consistently kind of doing bigger services on your bike, it's just monitoring the smaller job, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Next up, we've got this one from Maestro Patate. Uh, should I tune my disc brakes each time I take the wheels off? Um, I don't know quite what you mean by tune, but no, you shouldn't have to, really. The only time I would ever adjust my disc brakes is if they are rubbing for some reason. Next up, from Vladislav Savin, are the pro bikes creaking? Now, my pro bike may have creaked from time to time, but that was probably because I was responsible for most of the maintenance. Because a creaky bike is a slow bike. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought so. Although, you think slightly differently, don't you? Yeah, I do, because I think at the end of, say, like a wet 200 kilometer stage, things are probably just going to start to go a little bit wrong with your bike, aren't they? So your chain lube's probably going to have been rinsed off, that'll be creaking a bit. If you've got ceramic bearings in, they might be creaking a little bit and stuff like that. So I think they may creak, but only at the end of exceptional days. Yeah, all right, I'll give you that. You, you wouldn't throw your toys out of the pram if you buy a creek at the end of an epic. No. Paris Bay, maybe you can have a creek you buy it by the time you get to the finish. I'll give you that. Uh, right, okay, uh, Jacob Howell, 385. Um, common everyday maintenance that every rider's overlook and hurts their performance. Whoa. Can I say cleaning chains? Just do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think inefficient bikes, often people neglect uh, the simplest things like like cleaning. I know it's boring, I know I say it all the time, but if you want a quick fix, that's definitely one of them. And then replacing chains as they wear out, because worn out chains are less efficient as well, aren't they? Yeah, the one that used to get me was like not checking your tyre for cuts. So yeah. you kind of thrown your bike down a gravel road or something like that, and then you just head, head straight out the next morning. Like a cut tyre and a puncture in the first half hour is just never good. Elmo Mac. Elmo Mac. How do you properly realign a rear derailleur after disassembling your bike to travel? Um, I don't think you would need to realign it. If you just attach it and you attach it properly, uh, so if your B-tension screw, if you have one, which you might have that you put that in the right place because that's an easy mistake to make. But you should be able to take your mech on and off and not need to do any kind of uh, remedial work after that. This one got me because this is definitely something that's happened to me a bunch of times and it's from Ali Smart who says how to fix bar ends properly without the risk of losing them. Your bike's in the back of the car, bar end falls out, you never find it again because your car's really untidy like mine. Um, I kind of eventually got to the point where sometimes I'd wrap them in a bit of insulating tape, but most of the time when you wrap your bars with fresh bar tape, you need a little bit of bar tape overhanging and kind of use that to kind of tuck in the bar tape and wedge it in there. Yeah, yeah, I always leave a, a good strip of bar tape sticking into the bike. I, we did have um, a bike uh, turn up the other week that had bar end plugs glued to the tape, so literally just a tiny little dab of glue, um, which is a good shout really, because because it's glued to the tape, you can then pull it out. 
but it means that you're not going to lose it. So, maybe that's uh, how the pros do it. Yeah, maybe. I thought that was good. Uh, to be fair, we should probably ask the guy that's got five-year-old bar tape how he's managed it, because uh, that's impressive, keeping your bar in plugs for five years. If he um, still has them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Maybe they've rotted. Uh, right, OK. Tom Wilson, how can I tell what the maximum tyre width I can run on my bike is? You just have to use your judgment. If you've got a 23 in and it's looking a little bit tight, you're probably not going to go much above a 25. And equally, if you've got a 25 and you know you might not be able to go much above a 28, I'd say you've got to use your judgment, really. Right, we got this one from Stinger. Stinger, sorry, the numbers are confusing me, Stinger. Now, if you don't have a, clean, a bike stand, how are you going to clean bikes? Uh, lean it very carefully against something, I think. A wall will do just fine, but just make sure you don't lean it by the saddle or the bar tape, because then if it does slip, you're going to scuff it. So back tyres are excellent things to lean on. You actually perfectly demonstrate this technique in how to clean your bike in a hurry. Here's my five minute bike cleaning routine that I can do immediately after every ride, especially in the wet, so that my bike never gets really filthy and I can always set off with a shiny bike. Try making it part of your riding routine, just five minutes after a ride and you'll always get to ride a shiny bike. It'll last longer and it'll work better. Alexu Levy has a good but possibly quite sad question. He says, help me remove my aluminium seat post from my carbon frame. I've tried the tips in your videos but with no success. Oh, uh, well, there does come a point where that particular situation is unfixable, isn't it, basically? The trouble is, aluminium carbon uh, can bond together, basically, and the longer you leave them, the stronger that bond becomes until eventually that's it. If you have uh, carbon next to aluminium, so either either combination of seat post or frame, then just make sure every now and then you do take a look at it and make sure it's not getting stuck. CV Trap has got a good one. If you have two frames with different geometry, how do you copy your position from one to another precisely? Who's fitted to specialised tarmac but hasn't figured out how to duplicate the position onto a vintage Pinarello? Wow, that's pretty cool. Um, well, it's actually quite simple. So when it comes to bike fit, it doesn't really matter where things like your wheels are. What you want is your contact points in the right place. And so the start of all your measurements should be the bottom bracket axle. And then from there, your seat is always going to be in exactly the same position. And then your handlebars can be worked out in relation to that. So it all comes from that bottom bracket. So this is definitely another one for you because it's about bike cleaning. Oh. From John Say, who says, is there such a thing as cleaning your drivetrain too Never. much? Never. Definitely think about what you're using so you don't have to use like super strong solvents and stuff, do you? So um, definitely like bio degreasers are the way to go. Uh, I know that's what SRAM recommend. Uh, we've talked to them about it not very long ago, in fact. <laughs> that makes me sound so sad, doesn't it? I'm really sorry, I forgot. Uh, right, let's perhaps finish on one last question then before uh, we underline everything. Uh, okay, Tom H, is it common for a square taper bottom bracket to creep and what's the best for, fix for it? I'm going back a little bit here, uh, but yeah, can't the square taper bottom brackets, they used to creak really, yeah. You Before probably, my time, just. Okay, right, yeah, they used to so creak sorry. really yeah. badly. But it's funny, you know, people complain about press fit bottom brackets and how they creak, but clearly people have got short memories because taper bottom brackets were really bad, are really bad, in fact. Um, I think the best thing to do is to whip the cranks off, clean them really thoroughly, put a very light coating of grease on, uh, and then hopefully that will solve your problem. That's fair enough, isn't it? Yeah, a history lesson as well as a bike maintenance lesson for me there. Yeah, they're great. I had to buy a, uh, a square tape bottom bracket just literally the other day, and uh, I was racking my brains just to think how long the axle needed to be for my particular cranks. Uh, yeah, I found it in the end, don't worry. 113 mil, since you asked. <laughs> Should we leave it there, Tom? I think we should leave it there. Don't yeah. forget, if you want to ask a question for Ask GC Anything at any time, hashtag TalkBack across social media or in the comments below this video. That's right. Do make sure you subscribe to GCN before leaving this video. And if you want some more content, well, how about one of those bike cleaning videos? That one is just down there. And if you want to find out how to fit the newer generation of bottom brackets, click right here.